صباح الخير النهاردة موضوعنا عن الديسبيبسيا By the end of this lecture uh, you, you should be able to identify the major pathophysiological mechanism responsible for dyspepsia and construct the differential diagnosis of patient for patient with suspected dyspepsia identify the most appropriate tests to identify dyspepsia and apply acquired knowledge on virtual case scenarios and clinical situation and face-to-face -face session Uh, dyspepsia uh, it does mean uh, bad pepsis means digestion so dyspepsia means bad digestion dyspepsia is not a diagnosis it's just a group of symptoms including uh, upper abdominal pain or discomfort bloating early satiety postprandial fullness nausea with or without vomiting anorexia uh, symptoms of GERD regurgitation and brushing dyspepsia can be classified into three types Functional dyspepsia, structural dyspepsia, or a, a non-GI causes of symptoms like cardiac disease or muscular pain. We always diagnose functional dyspepsia by exclusion of organic causes. For diagnosis of functional dyspepsia, Rome, Rome Foundation put criteria for uh, uh, criteria based on symptoms. Uh, for diagnosis of functional dyspepsia. This criteria depends on the presence of one or more of the following. Postprandial fullness, early satiation, epigastric pain, epigastric burning with no evidence of a structural disease. These symptoms should have for at least three months with onset at least six months previously. Functional dyspepsia has two main subtypes postprandial distress syndrome and epigastric pain syndrome. In the first syndrome, which is postprandial distress syndrome, the patient will complain for at least three months with onset at least five months previously of one or more of the following. Patterson postprandial fullness, which occurring after ordinary sized meal and at least several times a week, or early satiety, that prevent finishing a regular meal and occurs at least several times a week. The other subtype, which is epigastric pain syndrome, the patient complain at least three months with onset at least six months previously with all of the following. Pain and burning that is intermittent localized to the epigastrium of at least moderate severity at least once per week. Notice, this pain not generalized or localized to other abdominal or chest region, not relieved by defecation or flatulence, to be differentiated from the irritable bowel syndrome pain, which is relieved by defecation or flatulence. Again, this pain is not fulfilling the criteria for gallbladder or sphincter of odd disease syndrome. The uh, approximate prevalence of dyspepsia is 25%, uh, with range being 3 to 15% if GERD symptoms are excluded. You could, you could imagine dyspeptic symptoms can account for up to 40 to 70% of the gastrointestinal complaint in a general gastroenterology practice. That is why we consider dyspepsia is an important subject because it is a common subject or a common complaint. Pathogenesis of dyspepsia. The pathogenesis is unclear. Factors that play a role in inquisition include visceral hypersensitivity, a tool we can get stimuli, a food hormones a, such as cystokinine, bone like food type, acid, intestinal secretion. The second one is disturbance in motility, just as slow gastric emptying, a gastroparesis, small bowel dysmotility and biliary dyskinesia, impaired fundic accommodation. During, as we know, during feeding, during the fundus 
relax to accommodate the food particle. This accommodation is mediated by serotonin 5-HT1P and nitric oxide via vegan inhibitory neurons of the enteric nervous system. The accommodation reflex may be impaired in as many as 40% of patients with functional dyspepsia. Another factor is dietary factor. Patient dietary factor, patient may frequently report being unable to tolerate only uh, uh, tolerate a large food uh, or large meal uh, and he is always tolerating only small quantities of food with high prevalence of snacking. Psychogenic factor is another uh, another distressing symptoms or another factors which share in the pathogenesis uh, of dyspepsia. H. pylori infection, uh, its role is controversial. Uh, diagnosis of uh, functional dyspepsia. Uh, please, when, when taking history, focus on symptom characteristics, onset chronicity, try to interpret symptoms and uh, uh, to identify possible etiologies such as GERD, Goldstone, uh, medication, side effect, particularly non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, chronic pancreatitis, diabetic gastroparesis, or obstruction. The patient should be asked about comorbidity, surgical history, family history of upper gastrointestinal malignancy, alcohol intake, tobacco use, stressful life events. Diagnostic evaluation for dyspepsia including lab test for exclusion of alarm uh, signs like CBC for exclusion of anemia, ESR which may raise in presence of malignancy, uh, occulted blood in a stool to exclude uh, our GI bleeding or GI bleeding in general. Uh, endoscopy, H. pylori testing, the simplest test for H. pylori is stool antigen, then urea press test. Other studies like ultrasound of the abdomen to evaluate the gallbladder for the presence of cholecystitis or gallstone, abdominal uh, CT uh, for exclusion of um, chronic pancreatitis, pancreatic cyst, cyst, uh, cystic lesion, or abdominal tumor. How to diagnose a case of dyspepsia? Using a careful history and physical examination together with some laboratory screening laboratory test okay if we satisfied with our diagnosis go on if we not satisfied with our diagnosis uh, the american gastroenterology association and the american colleague of gastroenterology suggest a strategic algorithm uh, look with me to this uh, algorithm we have a patient with suspected dyspepsia but using the uh, ROM3 criteria, our ROM3 definition, this patient uh, will be categorized according to uh, two features: alarm, uh, presence or absence of alarm features at any age, or the age of onset below 55 years old or above 55 years old. First, uh, if we uh, no alarm feature is found, no. Review medication, diet management, uh, 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 medication, especially non-steroidal diet, manage appropriately. Uh, means uh, consider dietary advice, lifestyle modification, or stop offending a drug like non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. If the condition resolves, reassure your patient. Okay. If not, move to the next step. The second point is age of the patient or age of onset of symptoms. If the age is below 55 year, uh, years old, below uh, uncomplicated dyspepsia without alarm features, consider dietary advice, lifestyle modification, empirical treatment. This lead to either the symptom resolved, then reassure the patient. If not resolved, refer, if not resolved, go to the second step. The second step here for patient at any age with alarm feature or patient uh, age of onset of symptoms above 55 years old. Uh, then 
we do our GI endoscopy. If the if there is a structural disease like peptic ulcer or cancer, treat appropriately according to the uh, the finding. If not uh, normal uh, gastro, if not uh, in the presence of normal upper GI endoscopy or presence of mild gastritis, manage as functional dyspepsia. Provide reassurance. Encourage lifestyle modification. Consider drug syrup. If resolved, then return to the first and reassure the patient. If not resolved, refer to gastroenterologist. Uh, alarm, alarm, alarm symptoms and signs include if the patient uh, has persistent right upper or, low, or, or, or right lower quadrant vein, if he has dysphagia, significant vomiting, gastrointestinal blood loss, family history of inflammatory bowel disease, unexplained fever, nocturnal diarrhea, a perirectal disease, involuntary weight loss. This is by history and if we find a pallor or signs of vitamin deficiency, cachexia or a palpate mass in the abdomen, this is an alarming sign. Patient with dyspepsia should be scheduled for our GI endoscopy if they demonstrate alarm feature or uh, are older than 55 years of age and or coming from regions where stomach cancer is more prevalent like Japan, China and Chile. Why? Endoscopic finding mostly in non ulcer dyspeptic patient, this is an endoscopy, our endoscopy, this is an ulcer, this is the picture an ulcer. So uh, most finding uh, most of the patients have no ulcer or cancer. Uh, the, the prevalence of esophagitis is only 5 to 18 percent. Gastro, gastric ulcer about 2 to 8 percent. Duodenal ulcer 4 to 13 percent. Non ulcer dyspepsia is 65 uh, to 85 percent. That is why we consider the endoscopy for certain population only. Treatment of dyspepsia. Allogresin for treatment of dyspepsia. Okay. If we have dyspepsia without GERD or non steroidal anti inflammatory medication, age less than 55 years old with no alarm feature, consider the H. pylori testing. The, the optimal test for H. pylori is urea press test or stool antigen test. H. pylori test testing positive. Treat for H. pylori. If field do endoscopy. H. pylori testing negative. Give PPI protein pump inhibitor for four to six weeks. If field do endoscopy. If normal, if the endoscopy is normal, consider antidepressant, hypnotherapy, behavioral therapy, and prokinetic agent. If failed, revise your diagnosis. The detailed Detailed medication will be discussed in the next few slides. Differential diagnosis: uh, functional dyspepsia should be uh, should, should, should be differentiated from the following. First of all, is GERD. GERD should be considered when the predominant symptoms is regurgitation, substernal burning, and acid test. Uh, GERD can be diagnosed by either endoscopy or 24-hour pH metry. The second one is peptic ulcer disease. Uh, peptic ulcer disease is one of the most common th uh, disease to be differentiated from dyspepsia. About 15% of patients with with dyspeptic symptoms have gastric or duodenal ulcer diagnosed by endoscopy. Uh, other causes to be considered in this patient are the use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug and the presence of H. pylori infection. Less than 2% of dyspeptic patients have gastric cancer. Older patients are more likely 
to have gastric cancer with a 98% of cancer occurring in patients older than 50 years of age. Other risks for gastric cancer include H. pylori infection. The so-called intestinal angina or um, a chronic intestinal ischemia is characterized by chronic postprandial pain with marked weight loss due to mesenteric blood flow uh, reduction that is inadequate to uh, the demand required by digestion. Typically, the patient has a history of tobacco use or under, uh, underlying ischemic heart disease, atherosclerosis. Diagnosis may be made by magnetic resonance angiography or CT angiography. Uh, Epid pancreatic copillary. The pain associated with chronic pancreatitis may be epigastric or localized to the central abdomen, classically with radiation to the bed bank. Weight loss may occur, pancreatic endocrine or exocrine insufficiency like diabetes, steatory may or may not be present. Upper gastrointestinal motility disorder also overlap with dyspepsia. Causes of motility disturbance may include diabetic gastroparesis, chronic intestinal pseudo obstruction, uh, uh, sclerodermia, post phagotomy syndrome, or uh, other systemic disorder to be differentiated in, from dyspepsia, sharing the same symptoms like diabetes mellitus, chronic artery disease, thyroid disease hyperparathyroidism, adrenal insufficiency, and uh, collagen vascular disease. Uh, the last one is infection. Uh, gastric infection other than H. pylori can cause dyspepsia. This includes cytomegalovirus, tuberculosis, or fungal infection. Parasite to consider include Giardia lumbella and Stelongloides stricturaires. Treatment uh, Non-medical part of the treatment, including reassurance that disease is a benign functional disorder, not lead to uh, malignancy. Lifestyle modification, like regular exercise and adequate restful sleep, can be helpful in uh, alleviating stress. Second, avoid caffeine intake and alcohol, uh, or minimize it as possible. Food which aggravates symptoms should be avoided like onion, papers, citrus fruit, uh, fatty or heavy uh, spicy food. Chemotherapy, uh, either uh, anti-secretory agent like H2 receptor blocker or PPI or proton pump inhibitor. H2 receptor blocker like ranitidine 150 mg twice daily or famotidine 20 mg twice daily. A proton pump inhibitor uh, like uh, omeprazole 20 mg daily uh, or uh, pantoprazole 40 mg daily. Pro motility agents uh, which enhance the gastric motility uh, are by accelerating peristalsis by interacting with receptors for serotonin and acetylcholine, motilin, and dopamine. Like, like motelium. Garopride, Domperidone. Uh, the third one is antidepressant and anoxylytic agent. Uh, low dose antidepressant or anoxylytic agent may help in alleviating the stress uh, in some patients. Other drugs which may, may help in treatment of dyspepsia, uh, antacid, business, or sacrifice. Other type of medication. Uh, or therapy which may help in dyspepsia, uh, psychological therapy. Psychological therapy include cognitive behavioral therapy, biofeedback, hypnotherapy, relaxation therapy, insight-oriented psychotherapy. Uh, this may, may help some people with uh, excessive stressful condition and excessive anxiety. Another type of therapy is complementary and alternative medical therapy. Like uh, artichoke, uh, gentian, ginger, lemon palm, milk cistern, peppermint, turmeric. Uh, therapy with this, uh, with this uh, remedy 
is not proved scientifically, but short term use is likely safe. Course and the prognosis. In general, significant number of patients with functional dyspepsia become asymptomatic or improve overall after one to several years. But patients with history of GERD treatment, prior history of peptic ulcer disease, use of aspirin, longer duration uh, of history more than two years, lower education, psychological vulnerability are associated with poor prognosis. Also, patients with H. pylori positive uh, is more liable to uh, has progressive disease or longer duration of symptoms uh, more than patients without H. pylori disease. Finally, you have to remember that dyspepsia is a common symptom having either an organic or a functional causes. Distinction between the two can be a challenge. Second. Clinical features of functional dyspepsia, GERD, and gastrointestinal motility disorders overlap, making the diagnosis difficult. Most patients with functional dyspepsia have normal upper GI endoscopy finding. Endoscopy is indicated for patients with new onset symptoms who are more than 55 years old and have alarm features. Functional dyspepsia remains a diagnosis of exclusion. Also, remember to treat dyspepsia, avoid overeating, eat slowly and regularly, regularly, avoid food with high fat, limit spicy food, quit smoking, avoid drinking coffee, alcohol, and soft drinks, maintain a healthy weight, exercise regularly, practice relaxation technique. Before goodbye, please. Be ready with your questions in the next face-to-face -face session.